Okay, and um, welcome to this week's lab. So um, this week, we will get familiar with uh, AWS CloudWatch. So CloudWatch is a monitoring service on AWS that allow us to check um, the resources, the status of resources. And also, we can also create alarms that uh, based on our usage and also based on our building status so that we will get notified when there's something is going wrong or when um, the bills is higher than that we uh, expected. All right, so to start, let's first uh, launch an EC2 instance. And then by using that instance, we will use that as an example that to see how the CloudWatch can work. Uh, so let's go to EC2 instance. And here, let's launch a very simple one. So let's launch instance. And here we are going to use an, an instance from an existing AMI. So let's go to the community AMIs, uh, which are the free AMIs. And let's search website. OK, so depending on when you are watching this tutorial, so you will see the different result. Uh, so here I'm using this one, the website image. And I'm going to select that one. So this is just a demo that how the CloudWatch um, can monitor our instance. So uh, I'm just select. I just selected a very simple one, and I want to make sure I'm using a, a free tier. And the next, so we will leave everything as default. So we'll use a default VPC, uh, etc. And let's use a default uh, storage. OK, and for the security group, so let's make sure that we opened HTTP. OK, because this is a very simple website and you can close the SSH. OK, so make sure you have HTTP and now you can review. And for this one, we don't need to SSH on this instance. So it's a pre-configured website. So let's launch it. And let's say we were, we can process without a key pair. OK, so this is for this lab only. So normally it is not a good idea to launch without a key pair because you will not be able to access your instance. So here uh, for this web for this lab, let's just uh, launch this uh, instance to simplify the lab. OK, and now let's view this instance. So now you can see it is pending. So if you check this instance and you will be able to see the instance ID. OK, so make sure that we remember this one. So we will use this instance ID later. And we have this public DNS. Uh, so we may want to wait for uh, a few minutes. So when the instance is ready, so you can keep uh, refreshing the status of this instance and until the instance is ready. OK, so after about uh, one minute, we can see the instance now is running. OK, uh, so let's see whether or not we open that website. So let's check that instance and let's copy this public DNS and let's open it in a new window. OK. Uh, so this again, this is a pre-configured, pre-built website. OK, so it may not ready yet. OK, uh, actually it is working. OK, so it is a very nice website. Again, it is pre-built. So we are launching, we launched this instance through the, an existing AMI. Cool. OK, so now let's go back. So the next, we want to create uh, several alarms on AWS CloudWatch. So those alarm will help us, will notify us when there is a problem with the bills or when there's a problem with our running resources, or for example, the EC2 instance in this case. So let's search CloudWatch. And let's open this one in a new tab. OK, so if this is your first time uh, to look at this one, so 
it should have zero alarms that being set up. Uh, so let's close this one. And you can see re they recently uh, updated their interface. OK, so let's go to all alarms. As I said, if this is your first time to view CloudWatch, you should not have any alarms. So let's create our first alarm, which is a billing alarm. So you can create a, an alarm here or you can create an alarm here. So let's see, create an alarm. And next, you need to search the metrics. So um, so what uh, metrics do you want to measure to generate those notifications, those alarm? So let's select the metrics. And here you can see there are a lot of already predefined defined metrics. So let's choose billing. And you can choose a billing by service, or you can choose a billing that for the total estimated charge. So let's choose the total estimated charge. And you can choose the currency. So let's use the USD, so dollars, and select that one. OK, so here you can give the name of the matrix. So uh, I'm happy with this one, the currency. And also you can choose different statistics, like minimal, sum, average. And you can choose a time period. So I'm happy with six hours. On the conditions, you can choose a static or you can choose anomaly detection. OK, so anomaly detection means that they will run some machine learning uh, model. So if they detected something that is on euro, so they will send you alarm. So for this lab, to simplify the uh, lab, let's choose static. And you can specify the conditions. Do you want greater than or greater equal or lower than or lower or equal? So let's say we want if the cost is greater than one dollar, the maximum within the six hours is one dollar, and we want to trigger that alarm. There are additional uh, configurations, so let's leave that as default. And the next, so so is a notification. So this is where it is integrated. Uh, the CloudWatch has been integrated with. SNS simple notification service. Uh, so you can trigger that when they, uh, it is in the in the alarm alarm. So that means in that threshold you defined, or when that is not in the alarm, or when there is insufficient data. So let's say we want in that alarm, and here I want to send the notification by using SNS. So here you can choose the existing SNS, or do you want to create a new one? So uh, I don't have anything new, so I just create a new one. And I, I will call it Cloud Watch Alarm. And now you can type the emails that you want to receive those alarms. Uh, if you go to SNS, you can also send text message. So here, let's say we are using email. And uh, you can put your email, so I'm going to use my GMU email, and I create a topic. Okay, so now we have a topic, and you can view this one on SNS console. So if you click that, that will bring you to this SNS console. So here you can see we just create one topic. Okay, and this is pending because you need to confirm this uh, subscription uh, in your email. Okay, so we'll do that later. So let's go back to CloudWatch. And here you can see you can also configure the auto scaling actions. And because we are using a billing alarm, uh, so we don't have any EC2 action available. You can also add system manager actions. So let's leave everything as default. And now you can set the name for the alarm. So that will be the uh, text, the email that you received. So let's say this is a billing alarm. And here you can um, provide a detailed uh, description. So let's say more than $5. OK. And you can see next. So this give you a visualization that this is the, the threshold that right now and the blue line are the estimated chargers. You can see it's almost zero. 
Okay, because literally we are running nothing right now. And also the conditions, actions, etc. And now you can click create this alarm. Okay, and the first state is that they don't have s sufficient data. That is because they just started collecting the data. So after a few minutes, you will see that you once they have sufficient data, they will change this one into the OK status. OK, and we also have a warning that is because that for this SNS, we haven't uh, confirmed uh, this subscription. So you need to go to your email to confirm that subscription. OK, so here you can see you need to confirm this subscription. So I'm going to copy this hyperlink. And I'm going to confirm that one. OK, so that has been confirmed. And now if you go back to the CloudWatch, if you refresh, you can see, OK, so uh, the one is gone. But still, we don't have sufficient data. So we have to wait for a few minutes and until we see the sufficient data. And hopefully, we will not receive a notification of the alarm, because hopefully, we will not exceed the threshold of the uh, the bill and uh, the budget that we set up. OK, after about one or two minutes, we can see that the status is now OK. OK, so that means uh, it is now an, it now has gathered enough data. And we can also view uh, the estimated charge. So depending on the statistics that we define, which is maximal in the past six hours. And you can see it is still lower than the one dollar that we defined. OK, so that is nice. And the next, we want to create an alarm that on our EC2 instance uh, so that to monitor the the status of the instance EC2 that is running. So let's create a new alarm. And here, let's select the EC2 and the per instance matrix. So now you can see we have uh, some matrix that are available. So to make sure that we are monitoring the running EC2 instance, so let's copy the instance ID and paste here. So now those are the instance that is running now. And let's choose the CPU utilization. OK, we select this one. And for this instance, let's say we want to calculate the average of the every five minutes. And we will receive the alarm that is greater than 80%. OK, and let's leave additional settings as a default. And the next. So notification. So let's we use our existing SN topic. So let's use this one. And so now my email is here is the only one email that received the notification. And let's add let's leave the action right now as it is. And next. So let's say that is EC2 alarm. OK, and now you can specify the, uh, the content. So that is more than 80% CPU utilization. OK, so you can see right now, because we just launched this instance, so the utilization is above uh, 80%. OK, so it is now uh, almost 100. That is because we just launched the website. So now if we create this alarm, again, the initial state state is insufficient data. So once it has received the sufficient data, it will send us in the alarm. So let's wait for a few minutes. OK, and now you can see uh, it has sufficient data. And once it has sufficient data, you can see immediately we are in this in alarm state. So if we field to the in alarm we have we have this easy to alarm and now if we expand we can see the right now the utilization is 99.99.5 which is above uh, the 80 percent that we specified so that's why we have this alarm 
And if we go to our EC2 dashboard, we, re we refresh it. We also see that this alarm is showing up here. And we can also check out uh, check our email. OK, so this is the email that I received. So this is EC2 alarm. OK, uh, and it says that so uh, it is above the um, the 80 percent of the CPU utilization for this uh, five minutes. OK, so that's why you have received this alarm. Uh, so if uh, the situation uh, does not change, so you may receive another alarm that in next uh, five minutes. OK, so now we can see that uh, the CPU utilization is has dropped a little bit. OK, so that is because when uh, the instance is stable, uh, so it does not need to install any new um, software, etc. So when this website is stable, uh, fully functioning, so there's and also there's no a lot, not a lot of traffic. So we all see that the EC, the CPU utilization will drop. So we all go below the 80 percent. So let's also wait for a few minutes. OK, and now you can see after about two or three minutes. So now you can see the utilization now is below 80 percent. OK, and now you can see uh, we are no, lo no longer in this alarm status. So here you can see there's nothing that in this in alarm status. So uh, I guess this might be a, there might be a delay on this symbol. But we can see now the both are both alarms are in this OK status. And now if we go back to our uh, EC2 instance dashboard, and you can see it is OK status. OK, so that is this EC2 alarm. And next, let's let's see we want to change this alarm. And what we can do is that we can add it to this one. And uh, let's keep those as default. But for this time period, I just want one minute. OK, and this time I want to see I want when the utilization is lower than 80 percent, which is right now the current status. Um, let's go to next. I want to add an action. So that means when in this alarm status, I want to terminate this instance. OK, well, in the real world, you, you may uh, the scenario you may want to um, use auto scaling so that if you have uh, some instance that is in lower CPU utilization, you may want to uh, delete or terminate or stop some instance automatically. And when your instance have very high CPU utilizations, you may want AWS to add more instance automatically. So this, so you can either use these actions or the best practice is actually use this auto scale action. So but that is outside of the scope of this lab. So to simplify that, let's say we just terminate is this instance. And next, and you can modify this message, you can say, okay, so lower than 80% terminate instances. Okay, and you can finally view that uh, change and you can update this alarm. OK, again, it may take a few seconds. OK, uh, so that uh, to make that change. So let's go to all the alarm and let's refresh. OK, right now it is still in OK status, but I believe in a few uh, minutes it will change to this uh, in alarm state. OK, so now you can see uh, it is now in this insufficient data state. Uh, so I guess in a few seconds, it will change to the in alarm state because uh, the current utilization is below uh, the 80 percent. All right, now you can see uh, we are in this in alarm status because, again, the current utilization is below 80 percent. And that is threshold that we defined. OK, 
And we also received this email saying that, OK, so it is lower than 80 percent. So the instance will be terminated automatically. So let's check that one to our EC2 dashboard. So now let's refresh it. OK, so now you can see the status is terminated because it is in this alarm. OK, um, so that is basically about all of this lab so that we have launched one EC2 instance as an example. So then we create two alarms. One is for the building and we never received that alarm, unfortunately. And another one is for this created EC2 instance so that when the CPU is higher than the threshold, we will receive an email. And we also change that alarm that when the CPU threshold is lower than the threshold, the CPU utilization is lower than the threshold, we will receive another email. And we also added an action that if that is lower than the threshold, this instance will be terminated. OK, so that's for this lab. So before we finish this lab, make sure we delete all those resources. So I just want to make sure that this one is really terminated. OK. And also when we go back to the alarm, so let's say we want to delete those alarm that we created. If you want to keep this build um, building alarm, you can. But keep in mind that CloudWatch is not a free service. So if you want to keep this alarm, you will uh, so you are you will cost your credits. So here I just delete that alarm as well. Okay, and finally make sure that you also uh, delete this SNS. Sorry. So go to topics. Okay, and also delete this uh, topic. 